Hello and welcome to the viewers of this video. This is the Orange Fan here, bringing you another entry for the franchise discussion category. This video will be dedicated to the recap and thoughts for issue 9 of the Young Justice tie-in comics, Cold Case. We begin this issue at Mount Justice on August 13th, where Captain Atom is giving the Young Justice team a lecture on espionage, but most, if not all, members of the Young Justice team are bored out of their minds by this lecture. The good captain realizes this and decides that maybe they'll have a better time learning on the field, so he suggests that they take on a mission. More specifically, it's about what he describes as a cold case from the time of the Vietnam War. He explains that he received a very reliable tip that the United States Air Force Captain Nathaniel Adams was framed for a crime that he was convicted of in 1968. The crime was that Nathaniel Adams allegedly killed Clement Lamar. And Captain Atom wants the Young Justice team to investigate this case and see if they can prove Nathaniel Adams' innocence. The Young Justice team agree to take this mission because they don't want to to listen to more of the lecture. <laughs> so the next scene takes us to Washington, D.C., and Miss Martian has taken on a form that bears a strong resemblance to Dr. Roquette, a character who appeared in Infiltrator, the uh, episode six of the TV series. And Robin is in the vents, and he's listening in on the conversation. What happened is, Miss Martian, in her disguise, is meeting with Wade Elin, the judge for Nathaniel Adams' trial, and Robin is in the vents to listen to this conversation. Wade Elin describes the trial as an open and shut case, and he says that Nathaniel Adams had pulled his knife on Clement Lamar because Adams believed that Lamar had sent Adams' squad on purpose. He believes that, or Adams believed that Lamar had purposefully sent Adam's squad into an ambush during the Vietnam War. And Enos Polk had found uh, Nathaniel Adams with uh, Clement Lamar's dead body. Uh, Wade Elin also adds that, um, that Nathaniel Adams had took his own life after some time after he was sent to prison for this crime. Next up, we're in Las Vegas, and Superboy and Kid Flash, who are posing as journalism students, are interviewing Henry Yarrow, who was, um, who was a friend of Nathaniel Adams, and he, was also, he also defended Nathaniel Adams during the trial. Henry Yarrow explains that, that Nathaniel Adams believed that there was a weapons smuggling ring going on, and he told Clement Lamar about this, um, about this uh, suspicion of his, and uh, Lamar agreed with Adams about this suspicion, so he sent the squad to, yeah, he sent Adams and Yarrow's squad to investigate this, but they were ambushed, and... Adams and Yarrow were the only ones who, of the squad, the only members of the squad who managed to survive the ambush, but they barely survived. And Adams believed that, uh, that Lamar had set them up and purposefully sent them into that ambush. So Adams went to confront uh, Lamar about this, but suddenly Adams had blacked out and by the time he regained consciousness, he found Lamar to be dead. And that's when Enos Polk had arrived. And Yarrow believed that Nathaniel Adams was innocent, so that's why he defended Adams during the trial. But the prosecutor, Kevin Blankley, had said that they found Adams' knife during the uh, scene. And the medical examiner... Shirley Mason says that 
Yeah, Shirley Mason said that um, she says that there was no evidence of anything in Adams' system that would have caused him to black out. So, yeah, Yarrow says that evidence was stacked against Adams, but Yarrow still believes that something suspicious is going on. He believes that Adams was framed. He also adds that Wade Elin uh, ended up marrying uh, the widow of Nathaniel Adams and raised um, and raised uh, the son and daughter of Nathaniel Adams and his widow as his own kids. So we then head to Arlington where we're back with Robin and Miss Martian. They've gone to they've gone to the house of Shirley Mason but they find that she's dead by the time they arrive. And they notice that she's uh, holding a picture of several military, uh, military officials. There's several military officials in this picture. And they find out that Shirley Mason herself was one of the military officials in the picture. Robin is, starts a facial recognition uh, scan yeah, he starts a facial recognition scan for all the uh, individuals within the picture, and then they leave before the police arrive. The next scene takes us to Honolulu, where where um, Aqualad and Artemis are talking to Randy and Peggy, the son and daughter of Nathaniel Adams and his widow, and. We do hear um, we do hear that the two siblings have very um, different uh, interpretations of the situation regarding their father. Randy believes his father, yeah, Randy believes that his and Peggy's father was a guilty traitor and considers Wade Elin to be their actual father for raising them. Peggy, on the other hand, shares the same sentiments as her and Randy's mother, who believed Nathaniel Adams to be innocent and framed for this alleged crime. So after the meeting, Artemis is Artemis says that she sees Randy's point about how, how being biologically related to someone doesn't necessarily make someone an actual parent. But Aqualad is distracted because his thoughts are in Atlantis. But then when he, uh, when he uh, starts to pay attention again, or he apologizes for not paying attention originally and admits that he was thinking of Atlantis, and Artemis decides to question or inquire Aqualad about his own parents, Aqualad describes his mother as being uh, native to Atlantis, but he says that his father was a surface dweller named Calvin Durham, who was a spy for Black Manta, who was, um, who was modified to become a water breather so that he could infiltrate Atlantis. But Calvin Durham had abandoned his mission uh, when he fell in love with Aqualad's mother. And they both, of course, raised Aqualad. Aqualad says this leads him to believe that they should not jump to conclusions and make sure that they have all their facts straight before they uh, accuse anyone of being guilty. So that's how that uh, goes down. So the next scene takes us to Annapolis where the Young Justice team have all met up and one of the Robin's uh, facial recognition scanner had m found a match for one of the individuals in the uh, one of the individuals in the picture um, a general named Tran uh, a North Vietnamese general named Tran and so they've gone to his house to well see what else they can find uh, about this case but using infrared vision Superboy sees that someone else is inside of the house besides Tran himself, and Miss Martian enters camouflage mode to uh, to go investigate what's going on. And what happens is um, Tran is talking to someone called Rocco, 
and um, apparently Rocco is planning to um, is planning to kill Tran. He has a sword with him, and that's right. Um, Robin and Miss Martian had realized that Shirley Mason was uh, was killed by a stab, or like a sword stab is what killed Shirley Mason. So they believe that this other individual in Tran's house may be the same person who killed Shirley Mason. And we find out that Tran actually had raised Rocco since he was a a child, so he feels betrayed, but Rocco responds that his loyalties are elsewhere. But Miss Martian is able to stop uh, Rocco from delivering a finishing blow with his sword by using her telekinesis to grab the sword. But Rocco has uh, infrared goggles, so he can see Miss Martian even though she's in camouflage mode, and he's able to attack her. But then Superboy arrives to uh, help his teammate. But the issue ends with uh, Superboy discovering that he actually could be wounded by Rocco's sword. So this, so like we said, or as was the case for previous issues, this is another two-part issue. And in this case, this two-parter focuses on Captain Atom it's actually based off of a storyline from the main comics, or the main DC comics. Captain Atom, Top Secret. I believe that's the title, if I'm not mistaken. And the reason why this stands out in particular is because that particular story was actually co-written by Greg Wiseman, who's one of the main... Uh, Greg Wiseman is one of the uh, one of the main creative minds behind the Young Justice TV series, so he's um, so he's adapting a story that he co-wrote into the Young Justice TV series or the tie-in comics. So that was a pretty cool touch. Now, Greg Wiseman for this tie-in comics issue, Greg Wiseman is not the only writer. Kevin Hopps, who's also a writer for the TV series, uh, co-wrote this, this adaptation. And that stands out because Greg Wiseman admitted that he's really close to this particular story, so he trusted Kevin Hopps uh, with what they should keep versus what, should, what they should leave out for this adaptation. So it's a nice uh, show of teamwork, and so they were able to adapt the story, but um, figure out what they should keep versus what they should uh, leave out for um, for this ad adaptation. So that was a pretty cool touch, though, that um, that one of the uh, creative minds for the TV series got to uh, re. Uh, reinterpret a story that they helped to create eh, before in the past. And actually, the case with Wade Elin, Wade Elin is a character that Greg Wiseman had co-created, again, for the main DC comics. So they got to incorporate that character into the TV series. And Wade Elin did appear in the TV series, or a ver yeah, Wade Elin appeared in some capacity in the episode Failsafe, and he did appear in Cornered, an episode from season two. But this two-parter is where Wade Elin has a more significant role in comparison. And otherwise, yeah, oh, oh, that's right. There's another big detail. Um, when Aqualad and Artemis were talking about um, parents and biology versus... Uh, yeah, how biology doesn't necessarily make an actual parent. Aqualad described his father as Calvin Durham, who was a spy of Black Manta. Now, if you've seen my recap and thoughts for um, season two episodes of Young Justice, you'll know that that's, uh, that detail doesn't match up with episodes from season two. And yeah, there's a reason behind that. And I mentioned this before, the video game Young Justice Legacy actually goes into greater detail about uh, Aqualad, um, Aqualad and uh, what he knows about his father. So that kind of helps to 
let viewers know that, or yeah, this detail kind of tells you that maybe Aqualad is, doesn't know as much as he thinks he knows about who his parent, about one of his parents, or yeah, that Aqualad might not know everything there is to know about his father, at least at this point in time. And Aqualad also it was distracted because he was thinking about Atlantis, and this kind of ties into what we saw in the Young Justice TV series. Episode 8, Downtime, had talked about... Um, yeah, Downtime uh, was an episode that was about how Aqualad kind of had to get his head in the game because he his thoughts were divided between uh, the missions that he's going on and, uh, and with Atlantis. So that's a pretty... Um, so they kind of were setting that up or kind of helping to show that this wasn't something that just happened in that episode. This is something that's been happening for quite some time now. So that's a good touch that they were able to connect those details from different episodes or issues of the tie-in comics. And it feels more organic that way. And otherwise, yeah, I think for now that's it for this issue. We'll talk more about this two-part story in the recap and thoughts video for the next issue, part two. But yeah, so this was pretty interesting how Greg Wiseman got to revisit a story that he helped to write, that he co-wrote uh, before it. Uh, a few years ago and this time he did have and he still has uh, he's still co-writing it because this adaptation because one of the writers from the TV series is co-writing it as well so to kind of help him to make sure what they should keep versus what they should uh, leave out so that was a cool detail and there we go for now. As of this video, we've now discussed issue 9 of the Young Justice tie-in comics on this channel. Take care, and until next time...